I'm gonna be really transparent with you guys. I receive a lot more spam, bot-like messages and emails wanting to collaborate with me as a UGC creator and as an influencer more than I actually get with real brands. And after a while it gets really frustrating and sometimes these messages are a little too good to be true. So I thought for this week's video, I would give you some tips on how to spot a sketchy brand or how to catch a scammer. <laughs> hey guys, it's Faith. Welcome back to another video on the channel. You heard it. This week we're going to be spotting some scammers. I thought it'd be fun to do like a fun but educational twist on the series because the reality of this UGC and influencer world is there are going to be brands that want to collaborate with you but are A, not gonna actually collaborate with you, or B, going to scam you of hundreds of dollars because you created content for them, but they didn't pay you for that. So today we're gonna go through some really basic points on how to catch really early a sketchy deal. You're gonna get some examples on what to look out for, especially for my people that are new into the UGC or even the influencing world. Okay, so tip number one is they are going to send you lots of deliverables. You know, you post a TikTok, post a story, on Instagram. Post an Instagram feed post, all of these different deliverables, and they're gonna have a super low budget. I have seen a lot of horrible postings or have experienced some horrible deals where they're requesting 10 UGC videos for $50 or $450 for 30 pieces of content. You guys, we have to just decline. Decline, decline. I feel like the kicker of this whole thing is they will say that they don't have a huge budget for influencers because they are a small business, they're just starting out. However, you go on Facebook and they have ads everywhere promoting their products. So they have advertising funding, but they don't have it for influencers. It's a little confusing. So my advice is to not just immediately dismiss the deal, but maybe educate them on why you set the rate that you have. You know, you put a lot of effort into script writing, filming, editing, sending, all of these different aspects, you're essentially a jack of all trades. You have a lot of roles that a lot of people are just hired on to just do one role. So having all of these different roles just causes you to put a lot more time and effort into each project. So you definitely want to get paid for that. You just don't want to get $300 worth of product and not get paid for it because products don't pay rent or bills or anything of that sort. So definitely educate them on why you're setting that rate. Now, if they're very adamant about the budget, I would probably dismiss it. But more than likely, especially in the UGC world, a lot of brands aren't familiar with what that is. Again, it's a super new marketing strategy that people in the e-commerce world are tapping into. So you might just have to educate them on, hey, I create content for you guys to exclusively use on your social media posts and your ads. You're not necessarily promoting on your socials, but you're creating content for them to use anywhere at any time. Now, if you're an influencer in this case, I would definitely stress on the fact that you have a highly engaged audience if you do. And even if you've collaborated with people in the past and you have a report of how many people actually bought product with your link, if you have a good conversion rate, I would definitely stress on that as well to kind of show how much value and how much influence and how many people you can bring to their site because that's essentially what a collaboration is. You're getting product, you're getting paid, to promote. They're essentially paying a billboard for a spot in your Instagram feed. So think of it like that way. Definitely don't feel guilty for turning down a deal if they keep saying, well, this is a gift to collab. It's worth this much. Definitely worth more than that, 1000%. So speaking on like the low budgets and the high deliverables, another thing that they do is they have you pay for the shipping or the duties if it's overseas. That's an immediate red flag right there. Run if you see that in the email. If you're collaborating with an influencer, you're paying for that billboard to be on their feed in exchange for customers. So of course you're gonna pay the shipping or the duty fee for them to do that content creation. It's not like you're automatically getting free product just because you have followers. That is not it at all. So if you're a brand watching this, please pay for the shipping. And for creators, if you see that on the email, run the other way because that is not a brand collaboration. That is just a transaction to get free product for free promotion. Now I added this as like a two point and I wrote down if they are paying only based on commission, huh? 
what? Let me explain to you what that means. So basically, they're most likely gonna give you a discount code or an affiliate link for you to put in your bio. So when you promote these products on your social media, people are going to see it and they'll either click on your link to shop it or to use code FAITH20 for 20% off. What if down the line, your viewer scrolls through that video and has that in the back of their mind for a while, but then a couple days later, they see an ad on Facebook ran by the brand about this certain product that they've seen multiple times on TikTok because so many influencers are talking about it because, you know, they're getting paid off commission, so they're promoting, promoting, promoting. And that viewer doesn't use your discount code, doesn't use your affiliate link or the other creator's code and affiliate link, but they click on the ad and they buy the product from there. Well, guess what? You and that other creator just lost commission off of that. So you might have brought the brand to the viewer's attention, but there's no proof of them shopping because you promoted it because they used the ads link and not yours. Awkward. And anytime that a brand just includes that they wanna use a discount code, I just kinda look at it a little side-eyed because I'm like, I am not doing a brand ambassador program. I'm creating content you're paying for that content. That's like brand collaboration. I, I don't get why people are so gun-ho about brand ambassadorships or paying only in commission because it doesn't really convert well for you, but it converts well for them. And a brand collaboration should be both parties winning, not the bigger person winning. That's just my two cents. Okay, so shifting away from budgets, deliverables, whatnot, the next thing I look out for is the email address that they send this request from. Now, a legit brand would reach out to me using their brand email. So this would be like partners at amazon.com or Alexa from amazon.com. They would have some sort of like partnership email or maybe a marketing specialist's name on that email with the brand name as the email. Now I've seen a lot of brands use emails, for an example, like Amazon support at gmail.com or at yahoo.com. It kind of gives a little red flag in my eyes that this might not be super legit, especially if it's supposedly from a brand that's a bigger brand that a lot of influencers work for there's a lot of different emails out there that are very sketchy. So I highly recommend just seeing where the email address is coming from. A lot of the times I know for Gmail will filter out and put some in the spam folder, but sometimes they make it into my inbox and it's unfortunate because I'm like, oh my gosh, Fashion Nova wants to work with me. And I look at the email address and it's not from Fashion Nova. <laughs> Another place to look out for is the DMs. Now I swear I get these kind of DMs all day long multiple times a day and it's these brand ambassador or I'm from a community page on this clothing website reaching out to you. It's like an outreach Instagram that's separate from the main Instagram. It's really weird. I highly recommend just immediately blocking them because especially if they're following you because that's technically like a fake ghost follower and that's gonna lessen your engagement rate because they're not really gonna engage with you. Unfollow them, block them, do what you gotta do. Actually, I'm gonna pull up right now to give you guys an example. So this is from a brand recruiter Instagram. I'll go ahead and put this on the screen. They're already following me, so I'm going to immediately block them. But this is basically, hello, we're an international clothing brand. We want you to be our ambassador, keyword ambassador, red flag, and have a special offer for the moment. You will be able to choose the item or items of your desire for 100% off discount, except for the international shipping fee and taxes that run 25 to $30 per item, depends on your location. Again, paying for shipping or duties, another red flag. And we'll give you a promo code by your name that allows your followers to get 35% discount and you'll get paid commission 25% from every purchase. Commission, discount code, another red flag. And when it is used three times, you'll choose any item and get it for free. I totally forgot to mention, if you're a part of an ambassador or a uh, commission-based plan, they'll definitely incentivize you to get free products or more discounts on their website. That is a perfect Instagram DM to just like block, run, delete, move on from. That's definitely not a brand deal. So, I mean, now that we're looking at DMs, let's go on to my computer and let's look at the random Upwork proposals for UGC content creators 
that are on there and like what to spot and look out for. Here's one right here. Video editor and social media account manager. Need editor with clean editing style for TikTok, Instagram reels, YouTube shorts content. So that's one, two, three, four platforms already. We'll be editing videos of podcasts, live streams, and simple YouTube videos. So this kind of sounds like to me, I'm going to be sitting through a whole podcast, a whole live stream, and trying to find clips to post across all these social media accounts. That's going to take forever. Keeping them and adding them to speech captions, turning them into short clipped videos. So not only do I have to find the clips in these long form videos, but I have to edit them, trim them down, make them right to size and caption them. Less than 30 hours a week, hourly, um, project length, three to six months, looking for an intermediate editor, $7 hourly. Now I'm definitely not dissing on this hourly price because there are people who are just beginning and you know, would like a little extra cash or maybe that fits right into their budget for where they live, but $7 hourly, they're targeting people in the US, $7 hourly, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just honestly not enough money for the amount of work you're gonna be doing. This kinda sounds like it's gonna be taking two, three, four hours a day maybe, depending on how long you have to sit through the podcast and live stream, edit it, send it off, get it approved, then post it, it's just a lot. That's just one thing to look out for, hourly pay on Upwork. Well, sometimes people just put that number on there and hope to negotiate with them, which is awesome. Those are like the best kind of people. But sometimes they're like, no, it is $7 an hour. <laughs> Instead of pointing out of all of the sketchy ones, we're gonna point out one that's a really good example because I feel like we need to have one with a good example and one and some with really bad ones. So this one's titled TikTok and UGC content creator, social media expert. We are looking to hire and bring on a content creator to help produce awesome content for all the brands we work with on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts. We also want a little bit of social media management experience with posting, making captions, responding to comments, if you can help us with that too. Here's what I like about this posting. Okay, number one, clear, concise information of what you're gonna be doing. So basically this is an agency where they're looking for an editor and content creator for their clients in this agency. What I also like is that they're looking for an expert, it's more than six months, and the hourly pay is 15 to $50. They also included in the description that pay is negotiable per project. So this is gonna be more like per video, like flat rate, not necessarily hourly, which I really like. And the cool thing about this is, on the side, it has a little bit of info about the client. They worked with people in the past, their payment method is verified, which is great if you're on Upwork. Um, they have their location, how many jobs posted, all this kind of info, they look very professional. So I would honestly apply for this. Unfortunately, it has 50 plus proposals, so they're probably going through a lot of them, but they look like they're active because their last view client was 25 minutes ago. So they're actively seeking people for this role. I would definitely hit save on that maybe submit a proposal really quick. So I think it's safe to say that Upwork has some good opportunities out there. That's where I've gotten most of my clients from, but there are also some sketchy ones to be aware of. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Comment below if you have any questions or maybe your craziest scenario working with a brand that turned out to be really sketchy. I'd love to hear your guys' stories down below. But with that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye!